Okay, welcome. Uh, my name is Jeffrey Towson. I'm here with Chris Thomas, a uh, partner at McKinsey & Company based in Beijing. Uh, basically to do five relatively quick questions about the state of the semiconductor and artificial intelligence in China. Uh, Chris's background, his current position is he oversees semiconductors for Asia, for McKinsey, and is their global head for digital strategy. So welcome. Good evening. So I just have five quick questions for you. Uh, question number one. What is the most important thing happening in AI in China today? I would say, I'm going to give you two answers on that one. One is a massive amount of experimentation in the consumer space, driven by the growth of these messaging and connection platforms, and lots of venture capital and big company money flowing into it, so experimenting with new ways to bring value to consumers. This is everywhere from financial services to media and other things. The second thing I see is a huge amount of innovation around the technical solutions for artificial intelligence, especially around developing new neural, neural processing semiconductors. Question number two, what's the biggest difference between AI in China and the rest of the world? I think AI in China has, uh, China has two unique characteristics. One, because it has a massive but already digitally connected populace. You can scale new AI applications much faster. So that means the competition is much more intense to be the first mover and the big winner. The second thing is that in China, because of these platforms and because of the requirement to move quickly, there's less fundamental innovation at the technology level and much more innovation at the business model or application level than what you see out of Silicon Valley. Question number three, what is everyone getting wrong about AI in China? What's the biggest misconception? That it's just a consumer game. There's actually a lot more economic value to be created leveraging advanced analytics and AI in traditional industry and manufacturing and service industries than helping people buy stuff online. Question number four, uh, what's next? What's coming in the next couple of years that we should all be keeping an eye out for? Well, if I knew the exact answer to that question, I'd be a hedge fund trader and I'd be sitting on my yacht today. But in all seriousness, I think what you're going to see is you're going to see big winners in standard platforms for artificial intelligence, similar to the way that you have Android or iOS for the phones, or you have Wintel for the PCs. This is a standard platform which other people can innovate. That has to happen inside the AI world for the technology to take off. And from this massive competing set of companies, some winners will emerge. Maybe not just one, maybe two or three with more specialized applications. So winning platforms. OK, last question. Outside of hiring McKinsey, uh, what simple step could a CEO of a China or Asia company do in with regards to AI? What would be an easy next step? The way I would look at it is um, take a look at a compendium of use cases of artificial intelligence. Take a look at 150 different ways that it's being used today. Brainstorm three or four of them that you could apply to your own business. And then just go out there and do it. Put together some tiger teams, put up some sensors in a factory, run some advanced analytics, see what you see. Apply three or four, see if you make some money, do it in a piloting way, see which ones scale, see which ones work, see what you learn. Okay, great. Thank you very much.